Hello Drone Racers, I'm Mark and today on Drone Racer 101 we are going to set up the Helifar Futon 2 drone. You may or may not have already seen the review of that. I don't know yet at this point. This is the first time I'm trying this, but this is going to go through and set it up because this thing is wired and ready to go. So we're going to go through and make sure it all works the way we want it to, get the radio set up, make sure we have VTX control from the radio with Lua scripts, which should all be working and ready to go by the time we're done here. Also go through my configuration in Betaflight so you can see how I'm going to fly it. I won't say it's the best, but it's the way I do things so you can decide if that's how you want to do it too. So I'm already connected in beta flight here and we'll go through the ports one more time. So the ones we really care about here is UART 1 is smart port, UART 3 is serial RX and mine came from the factory this way. This is the model that comes with the FreeSky version and I would highly encourage you to buy that because it came with an XSR which is all wired up and ready to go for telemetry. It's really the best scenario I could ask for. And then down on UART 6 we have tramp protocol so that will control our vtx so that should give us full options for controlling all of the video channels from my radio or my goggles or whatever i want to so we'll go through the rest of this step by step so we are on d shot 600 which is interesting we should be able to support d shot 1200 let's try it first let's spin it up first with 600 since that's how they've got it make sure the motors work then we'll come back and try 1200 before we're done also i'm gonna say i have not set this up this is me setting this up live so if something doesn't work or we do something wrong it's not a case where i've tested all this we're gonna be trying some of this live so we may make some changes and then go back and undo them i don't know we'll find out i'll try my best not to do that but d shot 600 i'm gonna enable motor stop i'll make a video sometime on why i do this but i only want motor stop when i'm taking off and landing and it's very handy for that scenario. And that will give it to me if I enable motor stop there. I'm gonna turn off the barometer just because I don't care. It does look like it has one, which is kind of nice, I guess, but I don't need it. Okay, personalization, this is a futon too. I like to always have that in my goggles since I have so many recordings, I can keep track of what's what. We are already configured for serial bus and S bus, which is good. Telemetry lead strip, there is not actually an LED strip on here. Air mode, I'm gonna disable here and I will re-enable it in the modes, which is where I prefer it. ESC sensor is all there and enabled. We'll see what that does. Okay, anti-gravity dynamic filter, so we'll save and reboot. If I didn't say it, this is beta flight 322. This is how it comes from the factory. If it does great, we'll probably do a video on upgrading it to something newer later. But for now, we're gonna get it in the air. So go to power and battery. I don't like the default warnings here that they've got. So minimum cell voltage, I turn to 3.1 and warning cell voltage, I turn to 3.3. That way it will warn me in a dip, but won't scream at me the whole time when I wanna keep flying. Pid tuning, I think these are probably default PIDs. We're gonna make a change here. I'm gonna set super rate to 0.75. I used to do 0.8, but I found 0.75 gives me a better balance for racing versus acrobatics, which I'm terrible at both. Go ahead and hit save here. Filter settings, this is disappointing. They didn't do anything, not right at least. So PT1, disable, disable. We'll leave this on for now. We'll see if we need to turn on the filter settings or turn off, I guess, the filter settings there later. But I found most people have had good success with this. Receiver, we'll set this up in a minute, but I know for my radio, I will set this to Spectrum. So now it says T-A-E-R and I will save that. So modes, this is where I'm very specific to me. I will have AUX1 and I will have that down here on the low switch. I will enable angle on AUX2. That's how I like to take off and land. And then horizon, I do in the middle. I like that for line of sight control. Beeper, I will turn on on AUX3 on the high range. So here I will enable air mode and I will set this to aux two and I'll leave it here in the middle and stretch up here. So what will happen is when I switch aux two, that's my options, default switch is angle for takeoff and landing. I can do horizon mode, which will do horizon mode with air mode. When I switch to the full switch, it'll do rate mode with air mode. So I get air mode when I'm flying, but not when I'm landing, which to me is the best of both worlds. Then flip over after crash. Uh, I think this will probably work with all BL heli switches. So I'll move that just so I don't accidentally flip it and I'll set that on aux four. I will save this. Motors will come back to and test later. So OSD isn't bad, it's acceptable, except I want timer one and timer two. I'll move that down here so they're together. Fly mode I like, craft name I like. When I'm reviewing footage later, it lets me see what things are. 
Current draw, I'm not concerned about because I don't want to calibrate it. And if I was flying the same model over and over and over and over and over, I'd probably work on that. But for me, it's not a big deal. Then I also want warnings and average cell voltage. So warnings is good. And then average cell voltage down here, I'll put it with the total cell voltage. I love average cell voltage because I change around battery sizes all the time and I don't want to have to divide while I'm trying to fly. So with average cell voltage, it just shows me at a glance. While we're here, we'll take a look at the version and see what it says. It does say F4V2, that looks sweet. So on my radio, I am using an X9D plus SE here, but this should be the same, pretty much exactly the same for all newer radios. So I will click and hold for create a model. In my case, I've got a drone, I will just page through here. Some of this is gonna be really obvious for you if you've done this before and you may not need this. Some of it you just may wanna see my settings. Some of you may be the first time. So I'll click page, now I'll name it. So I'll click enter, scroll through and name it. I won't make you sit through this. The one thing, one tip, if you have the letter here and you hold down enter, you will get a capital. Okay, while I'm at it, I'm gonna go through and set fail safe mode to no pulses. I'll come back here later and set the rest of this when I'm ready to bind the receiver. So then I will just go through to inputs on page four, I'll do a five, and I will go down to source, click, and the easiest way to do this is to flip the switch you want it to be. So this will be my aux one, that'll be my arming switch. Aux six is my mode switch. Now this is where I do it, other people do it different places, that's all fine. Aux three will be my buzzer over here. And aux four, flip over after crash. So then I go to mixes and here all you have to do is go down to the channel and hit enter and exit. Down, enter, exit, down, enter, exit, down, enter, exit. Now if you wanna name these, you can. I don't bother because as you can see, I have tons and tons of models all set up. The other thing we wanna do is get it set up with telemetry, but we will do that after we get it bound to the model. Okay, I've got my battery, I've got my smoke stopper just in case, and it also makes it, because of the switch, easier to get things set up. So I've got it wired so I know the battery's not gonna provide power when I plug it in here. So now I'll do a quick turn on to make sure there's no problems before I actually go through and bind the radio. That looks really good. Okay, you can see my receiver is not set up which is what we would expect. So turn it back off. Now thankfully on this one, the button is really, really easy. So I'll just push that button down and flip the switch back on. Now we see it's in ready to bind mode. Take my radio over here to, I'm gonna change this to eight channels because I don't need 16 bind. So I'm gonna do one through eight telemetry on. And there we go, I have red light flashing. I think that worked. Sometimes there's a problem when they're this close together. You really shouldn't have them this close, but it seems to be okay in this case. So if it doesn't work, try moving them a little further away. It depends on the receiver, but in this case, hey, it worked, we're good. So on the radio now, the other thing I'm gonna do is go in. Oh, there you can see RSSI is there, that's good. So I'm gonna go through and go through the telemetry page. So here you see I skipped past it. One thing you can do is hold down page, just as a quick tip. There I can go back to telemetry. So I will discover new sensors, and there it found a whole bunch of stuff. Good deal. So the one I care about mostly at the moment, let's see what it is. Yeah, A4 is my average cell voltage, so let's try that. So what I'm gonna do now is go to the next page, and voltage source, I will set that to A4. Let's see what happens. So there now, Here's what's nice, it shows me my average vo cell voltage on my screen here. This works with the X9D, but it doesn't work with all radios. That's one of the reasons I really like this. It does show me all of this data here on my main screen now. So now we'll go back to Betaflight. So now in Betaflight, we'll go to the receiver tab and that looks like it's working well. Everything's really centered. Everything looks really awesome. Check all my switches. There I'm armed. Modes. Beeper. Not an exceptionally loud beeper, but it works. And flip over after crash. Okay, so now let's go to motors. I'm gonna make sure nothing is touching here. I understand the risks. 
So I've just got a very light amount of power here. This is one problem with my smoke stopper connected. I actually can't crank this up very high, so I will go through and disconnect that now. But it's nice to see even with a very low voltage, these motors turn and were very smooth. So now I'll connect without the smoke stopper. There's a case where... There we go. So there was a case where the radio was just too close. It was having problems getting connected, but it did after it did that. So now we'll try the motors again. Was that smoke? No, it's not hot. Let's try that again. Oh, <laughs> so that was not smoke. There's a little hair in here that the motors were spinning and making it look like I, there was smoke coming out. So good. Whew, I was a little worried there. That looks really good. So now, next step, let's go back to configuration. Let's try D-Shot 1200. Save and reboot, see what happens. Ooh, those things are fast. So that looks good. I don't see any problem with that at all. I don't think I'll have any control problems at all. I will do a quick test with the radio too, just to make sure. Yeah, that looks nice. Yeah, that looks good, that looks really good. So now with most models, I would say we're ready to go. Let's put it on, let's go fly it. But now I wanna see if the tramp control works. So now on my radio, I should be able to, I'm not armed, that's important. Push the right stick up and the left stick left. So that will enable my modes here now. You can see my OSD, so I will go through to features and VTX TR. So what I'll do to check this really easily, so it says I'm on Fat Shark 1, um, the, the scanner just didn't catch it right, but the easy way to check this is to just change to something totally, totally different that won't work. So here I'll set, confirm, yes, and there we go. We changed and oh, I have no video, that's perfect. So we'll just scan again. So that means the receiver is set up properly and now I can easily scan and change this. There we go, so we're set up on, uh, on that, easy to go. So just save and exit. So the last thing we wanna do is make sure it works on the radio here, which it should, but we'll just hold down the menu button and page and go into Betaflight and Lua C. So I'll have a video for this soon on the QX7 Plus, getting that updated and working, especially now that I have a model with it ready to go, but I'll execute. So here are all my PIDs and my rates and my rates and my filters and my PWM, don't care, RX. Here's what we want, VTX. So I'm on R1, 25 milliwatt right now. So I'll press enter and I'll just change this to Fat Shark 1. Save that. Press and hold down menu again. It'll ask me to save page and it changed it. Oh, that's just gorgeous, right out of the factory. I love it that that is all set and ready to go. For a quad this price, I hope it flies well because the setup is outstanding. Change it back to uh, race band one. So I'm set up and ready to go and I can access it again and see everything. And my video is back. Oh, that's just awesome. I love it, I love it. Okay, so that's gonna be the end of this video. If you haven't seen it yet, go watch my review. If you like this kind of format, let me know. So I will do more individual setups for the radio and like this. So if you want it, great. If you don't want it, great. You don't have to watch it. This one though was pretty easy because they had everything all ready to go. So until next time, remember, Top Quad 2018, maybe? At least first quarter? Gosh, they nailed it on this one.